So now will be, what do you do with everything temporal that you have or that you don't have? So what do you do with everything temporal that you have and everything temporal that you don't have? I want to extend it beyond the things that you have now to the things that you don't even have. Perhaps you don't have money. So what do you do with the fact that you don't have money? Perhaps you don't have, you know, uh, notoriety. You don't have, uh, you know, fame. So what do you do with your absence of fame? And what do you do with the fame if you have it? You know, whatever it is that is tangible, whatever it is that you've got that is not eternal, that has times and seasons, that is that has time frame that you have, what do you do with that thing? Number one, it should determine. It should not determine your disposition to life. It should not be determining your disposition to life. What you have or don't have should not be determining your disposition to life. It should not be determining how you respond in life. It should not be determining how you don't respond in life. Do you understand? If you have money or you don't have money, it should not determine the way you respond in life. If you have money or if you have, if you have people or don't have people, it should not determine the way you relate in life. You should not decide to use your life recklessly because you think there is nobody who loves you, there is no one that you have, and so nobody will be bothered. And if you die, nobody will be bothered about it. No, that's not so. The fact that you are living means that God is interested in you. That you are still breathing means that the assignment of God in your life is not yet done. And that simply means that whatever you have or don't have should not be the determinant of your disposition. Whether you have good relationship or not. You have a husband or you, do, or, you, or you don't. You have a wife or you don't. You have children or you don't. You know, whatever it is that you have. You have a house or you don't. You have a car or you don't. You have clothing or you don't. You have food or you don't. Whatever it is that you have or don't have should not determine your disposition. It is not an excuse to jeopardize eternal life. Whatever you have or don't have is not an excuse to jeopardize eternal life. It's not a reason to lose that which is eternal to you. It is not a reason to damn your soul so that you are unable to have access to eternal bliss with God. You know, it is not a reason to jeopardize what your eternal life will look like. It should not be considered, number three, it should not be considered, it should be considered a tool, not the reward. Whatever you have or don't have, because they are temporal and they are not eternal. You should not be considered as a reward. If you, if you consider money as a reward, you already missed it. You know, a couple of weeks ago, someone was supposed to do something for me. And as far as I know, the individual decided not to do it because we could not agree on money. And I smiled. I smiled, actually. And I, 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 I didn't even bother to press it because if only the individual understands the weight of what it is that we are trying to do, the individual will not be talking about money at all because money is something that will be resolved. It's not the issue. <laughs> Whatever it is that I wanted to give to the individual was an appreciation, not a payment for the service. But you see, very few people understand these things. And the very few ones who understand it, by the time you ask them questions, they will tell you things that, like they have been used, that they've been used by people, they've been taken advantage of by people. But you see, in the real essence of it, what you have or don't have. I mean, uh, uh, the material things, they are merely tools. They are tools. They are not the reward itself. They are just merely tools. It should not become an idol, number four. It should not become something greater than God. It should not become an idol in your heart or even in your space. It should not become something that you worship, you know, because that thing is significantly, you know, adding certain value or, to your life. You see, whatever you have or don't have should not become an idol. That you don't have money now should not make money something that you are ready to sell your soul or sell everything that you have for it. You know, that you don't have resources should not make you the individual that has now prioritized or idolized everyone who has resources. To the point where God means nothing to you. To the point where the word of God and the standard of God no longer guides your life. Because as far as you are concerned, the things you don't have, they are the things that, you, that, that determines your response. It's amazing how you give money to people and their countenance changes. It's amazing how you give certain benefits, physical, material benefit to people and their disposition in life changes completely. And you wonder, you know, even those giving it to the person already knows that that is the key to that person. How can something material be a key to a living spirit? How can something 
temporal be the key to the heart of a living person? How can the food you eat be, be so strong and powerful that it can change your cost? How? I mean, these are the disciplines that we must attain as people who truly love God and who wants to live fruitful and meaningful lives. Number five, it should be submitted to God for definition and disbursement. It means that anything you have or don't have should be submitted to God for definition, to understand what is the purpose of this thing. If God gives you money, you, must, you need to find out from God what is the purpose of this blessing that you've given me. You know, if God has given you relationships, you must know what is the reason for this relationship. If God gave you a wife and a husband or a child, you must be able to say this is, this is the reason why God gave you that child and not attach your own meaning to it. You know, because it's when we start attaching our own meanings to it and that thing starts to morph and, you know, evolve into something that we did not attach to it, we become disappointed. And we go on social media and start becoming philosophers and saying all kinds of things that are, that are unfounded, as it were. You see, it should, not, it should be submitted to God for definition and for disbursement. It should be submitted to God, you know, to know what it is for and submitted to God to know how to use it how to put it to work, where you must put it to work, why you are putting it to work, for whom you are putting it to work. Because if you put them to work in places where that is not in alignment with God, who is eternal, or his purpose that is eternal, or his kingdom that is eternal, that is a waste of resources. Finally, it should never be more valued than those who wield them. It should never be more valued than the people who wield them. And so, Whatever you have or don't have, you should not value them above the people that will them. You know, if you don't get love, the fact that you don't have love in your marriage does not mean that you should, you should value, you know, love more than the person that God has given to you. If you pay attention to the person that God has given to you, you might eventually get the love you are looking for outside from that person. There is a way you will treat your wife. It doesn't matter how much she loves the Lord, you will, you will not get love from her. There's a way you can treat your husband. It doesn't matter how much the man fears the Lord. You will not get the love that God commanded him to love you from him. Because you see, it is very instructive that we know that that which, is, which we have or don't have must not be more valuable than the people who wields it. Money must not be more valuable than the person from whom you are getting it. And so when there is a disconnect and when there, is a, there are disagreements, you know, and you know, some you know, miscommunication, what you, you must identify what is priority to you. You must identify what is significant and important to you. And what is significant and of priority to you must not be that thing that is temporal. It must be the things that are, that are beyond temporal, eternal things. It's things like what is written in the books of God concerning this engagement. What is heaven's, what is heaven's view on this matter? Those are things that should be more valued to you than the things that are temporal in front of you. May the Lord help us in that man. It should never be more valued than the people that, be, that wields it. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning, I will look at understanding the nature of things. In summary, I will say there is nothing that is eternal. No thing that has the definition of the word thing is eternal. Every eternal thing has allegiance or has a connection to God. Everything that is eternal has connection to God. Take God out of everything that is eternal and then it will no longer be eternal. Jesus Christ is Lord. The message of God is, is, is contact, connected to God. The word of God is God's word. You know, the one who does God's will, God is in there. The glory of God is still God. You know, the remembrance of, of the righteous, because the righteous is doing the will of God, you know, an eternal reward that will be given by God, those are the only things that are eternal. Only God and everything associated with Him is eternal. Everything else is temporal. And everything else should not determine your disposition. It should not be used as an excuse to jeopardize your, your eternal life. It should, not be considered, it should be considered as a tool, not the reward. It should, be, it should not become an idol in your heart or in your space. And it should be submitted to God for definition and disbursement. And finally, it should never be more valued than the people who will them. This is the word of God that I brought to us this morning. I hope it has enriched us. I hope it is helping us to be a better person. Everything eternal 
is connected to God. If you have God, then you have everything, both eternal and those that are temporal. If you are in tune with heaven, you have everything. And you see, like I said at the beginning, contemplations in the mind, contemplations in the mind is, is going to make one really, really freeze out, like computers that freezes when you put too many things in their memory. The best place is to settle this issue in the depth of your spirit. Settle this issue in the depth of your spirit. That as far as I'm concerned, God is the ultimate. And if anything is not in alignment with God, then I know it is not eternal. And if it is not eternal, it is not worth me fighting over. If it is not eternal, it is not worth me living or dying for it. You know, if it is not eternal, it is merely a tool, not a reward. If it is near, if it is not eternal, then it is not something I should worry myself too much about. If it comes, glory to God. If it goes, glory to God. You know, at the end of the day, all things, you know, are consistent in Him. And He is the creator and the owner of all, according to scriptures. I pray that the mercy of God will prevail concerning you and concerning me. So this morning, just say a few words to God. You know, and ask the Lord that God, uh, I, I, I want to focus on you so that my life will not just be a passing glory. My life will not just be all about things that don't last. My life will not just be all about things that are not visible. I mean, all about things that are for a time and a season. You know, I want my life to be for something beyond time, this time and seasons. I want my life to be something that extends beyond time and season. And so God grant me grace to be focused on you. Grant me grace to be focused on your ideals. Grant me grace to be focused on your word. Grant me grace to be focused on your person so that at the end of the day, I will not be missing my eternal reward in the mighty name of Jesus. We're grateful to God this morning for this beautiful time. And I, I really do pray that these things uh, make you a better person. So do please do share this with your friends. Uh, share them with your friends too. Uh, whenever you get to interact with this word, and the Lord will, will see to it that every one of us are ordering our lives the way we're supposed to. Thank you very much for listening this morning, and God bless you. You have a wonderful day. Bye.